So do you want to know tips for having a successful homeschool day? Tip number one, make sure you get a solid eight hours of sleep the night before. My head just hits the pillow and I fall right asleep and it is la la land until, well, my alarm doesn't even have to go off. I naturally wake up before it does. But it's not just the sleep that makes each and every one of my days so perfect. Come in. I made your coffee extra strong. Thank you, bud. How do you like it? Thank you. Hello, mother. Hey, good morning. Hey, would you mind making me some eggs? Sure. Would you like to? Make them the same way you did yesterday. the dishwasher and clean the house for you. <gasps> Good job! I also dusted while I was bringing coffee. Thanks. You guys are always on top of it. Hey, G, will you be a deer and rub my feet? I would love to. Yep. And that's how it's done. I guess it was just a dream. My dog is totally distracting me. She's too cute. She's too cute. Okay, we might just have to leave her in here. Because you totally need a school mascot. It definitely is like <clears throat> the secret ingredient to making your home school official. You need school colors. You need a school mascot. Okay. So today I'm going to share with you five tips for a more successful homeschool day. Now, if I actually knew the secret recipe, then I would be on the homeschool circuit, I guess, writing books. I would be um, presenting at all these conferences telling you this is how you do it and this is the way that it works. But not every day is going to be a good day. There are ups and downs, but there are definitely things we can do to help set us up for success. So believe it or not, having a successful homeschool day, it doesn't require me starting out with eight hours of sleep. It doesn't require my children making breakfast for me, none of that. It doesn't require coffee. It doesn't require physical relaxation. I mean, all those things are nice and I will welcome them at any time. I mean, if my children want to make me coffee. I'm not going to say no, but that does not determine a successful homeschool day. In all honesty, a successful homeschool day, in my opinion, begins with me. So if I wake up grouchy, if I wake up with a bad attitude, if mom ain't happy, no one's happy. And I gotta say, I'm not a morning person. I'm not a person who sleeps well at night in the first place. So I am definitely not one of those people that rolls out of the bed in the morning and it was just like, morning is here. No, that is not me. I roll out of the bed and I'm like desperate for coffee. I'm desperate for <clears throat> something to motivate me to get up because I would really rather just pull the covers over and roll over and sleep some more. So if I wake up with a bad attitude or grouchy, I have to get my spirit under control first. The Bible says he who, has, who does not have self-control is like a city without walls. It's like you're defenseless. You have no defense against any of the attacks that are going to come at you that that day and there will be plenty there's a spiritual battle even in homeschool with your children anything that goes wrong in that day if you don't have self-control how are you going to fight that so you are defenseless you are like a city without walls so i have to get my spirit under control first i have to get my thoughts right and determine in the very least i'm going to control my own attitude <laughs> so that is my number one tip Mama, you got to get your own attitude right to start the day off on a good note. My second tip is start with the most important thing. I don't typically start my homeschool day with my own quiet time. It's That's just never really worked for me. I actually do better with my own quiet time, maybe in the middle of the day or maybe at the end of the day. 
but first thing in the morning, my brain isn't working right. I just need to get up and get moving and, and get breakfast and just, I just need to get moving and get going and get my kids going. But I do make sure that we start our day with the Lord. We start our day with prayer, with some sort of Bible study. I did a morning time video. Um, I will link that below, but you should check that out, how we do morning time. It's very, very spiritually focused. There's also fun in there and other things that maybe some other people put in morning time. But our top priority is to start the day with the Lord because it sets our day up and it reminds us who we are. And that even amongst our own family, we are representing Christ with each other and we want to honor him in our actions and the things that we do. And I often remind my children, even in the smallest things, whether you're putting your laundry away, whether you're doing your schoolwork, we have to give our best no matter what, because that is what the Lord asks of us. He doesn't ask us to be perfect. He doesn't ask us to be the best. He asks us to give our best. So in math, you know what, if I have a child that's struggling, but they're doing their best, that's, that's all I can ask. So we ask God to be with us. We ask him to make this a productive day. We will ask him to help us keep our frustrations under. So I start that day with my children, but I also, I need to get some of my own time in at some point with the Lord myself. There are gonna be times where, mama, you're gonna feel like you're drowning and you've got a lot, you've taken on a lot and this homeschooling thing, it's not a joke. It's tough work being at home with your kids all the time, fighting your own flesh and fighting theirs. I feel like every homeschool year goes through cycles. You start out with all this enthusiasm. You're ready to go. You have an awesome plan. And maybe even just one or two weeks into the plan, you're like, this plan ain't working. And then you get a few more weeks along and the weather starts to change outside. Although I do love fall. I love it when it starts to cool down. But there's something about that part in the school school year where you're that high you're on at the beginning, it just starts to come down and it just starts to feel harder. And especially in the fall, I think you start to feel like we're not even halfway through the school year yet. So mom, you have to, you have to fill up your cup. You cannot provide for your children what you don't possess. Heidi St. John, one of my favorite podcasters always says that. I did a devotional for homeschool moms about this very topic. I'm gonna to link that below. You should go and check it out. The verses that are shared and um, the thoughts that were, that were shared through that devotional, I think will be a real encouragement to you. The third tip for having a successful day is eliminate your distractions. Your kids are gonna get distracted. So are you mama if you don't control it. And if you get distracted, your kids are definitely, most likely if they're like mine, they aren't gonna stay on task if you're distracted. So what are your distractions? For me, it's my phone. I have mixed feelings about needing to have my phone near me in case of an emergency because we joke around with my mother. She does not like it if she calls and you don't answer. And she has often said, what if I'm in a ditch on the side of the road and you won't answer your phone? And I usually say, why are you calling me instead of 911? <laughs> but anyway, there have been family emergencies or things that have happened before. So I have mixed feelings about turning my phone off and putting it on airplane mode because you don't want to miss those things. But I guess you could, you could turn your, put your phone on airplane mode for a couple hours. Look at my dog. <laughs> She's so cute. You could put your phone on airplane mode for a couple hours and then have certain times during the day where you check it. One thing that I try to do is I do try to leave it in the kitchen. So if we're in another room, I try to leave it in the kitchen where I'm not tempted to look at it. Um, so I have to put my phone down and, you know, I love homeschooling, but I have other interests and I have to fight those other interests and say, you know what, this is like a job and these are my work hours and this is the time where I'm concentrating on school and I need to eliminate all other distractions, including the thousands of internet web browser tabs that are open in my mind. One of the things that is also a distraction for me is a messy kitchen. Actually, um, a messy house in general is a big distraction. I've gotten worse with that as I've gotten older and I'm not like a complete neat freak by any means, but I like things put away and it just makes me feel so much better when things are put away and they're just clean. And I'm telling you, you, you never get that with children. It doesn't matter how often I do the dishes. They just keep eating. 
and they just keep dirtying up more dishes and the same thing with the laundry and um, dusting and vacuuming. It just keeps happening. But, but anyway, a messy kitchen on a homeschool day is a huge distraction for me. I find it very, very difficult to concentrate when I'm looking around and I'm, I'm seeing messes. So one thing that I've implemented is after our morning time, we take 15 minutes up to a half an hour, depending on how early our morning time ends. But we, we call that our morning chore time. So it's like a little break where I can go take care of the kitchen, make sure it's cleaned up. The kids go, they put their laundry away and they do whatever else their chores are. And that has been a big help for my state of mind also. So that is an, a distraction that I can take care of very quickly. And so we just do that in the morning. So what happens if I don't eliminate those distractions? Well, I'm distracted. And then the kids are getting off focus or they're feeling like my heart's not in it. They may not say that, but that's what they're going to see. If you're not really focused on them and what you're doing, that's what they're going to pick up. So if I don't do that, then our day just gets derailed very easily. And if I'm constantly looking at my phone, who knows who may text me in the middle of the day or, or if I get stuck on email or even if I just open Facebook for just a second and start reading some, some news article. Next thing you know, 15 minutes has gone by. And, and if I got distracted and my children get up from the table, it's really difficult to get them back. Leave me a comment below. If you manage this well, if you are just fantastic at eliminating your distractions, what are your distractions? And what do you do to help alleviate them? I really wanna know, especially, especially with the phone and feeling that conflict of, well, what if it's an emergency? So let me know below if you've got this under control. Another thing I do regarding the chores, one, just one more thing, we also, kind of tidy up a little bit around lunchtime and then again at the end of the day. And that is something that I implemented this year, just little breaks to tidy up throughout the day so that nothing gets just completely out of control. And that has helped a lot. Tip number four, do your hardest stuff first. That way it's done and you have something to look forward to in the afternoon when you're, it's after lunch. All of your blood is rushing to your stomach to digest your food and you start to feel sleepy. I don't know if anybody else is like that, but I always am a little bit more tired after lunch. I have a little bit less energy. So I don't wanna save super hard things for the afternoon. So the things that we do in the morning, we make sure that our math and our, our language, that type of thing is done. And of course, like I said, our Bible, because that is the most important subject of the day. We get that done first. And then our afternoon is saved for our gather round units and maybe anything else that's fun, and then getting all the homework done. We also will likely save any physical activity for the afternoon. Occasionally, occasionally we might go out maybe mid-morning for a walk or if we're gonna go to a park or something, we might do that around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. But for the most part, I try to do that after lunch because it does help wake you up when you start feeling sleepy from the blood rush to your stomach. The fifth tip for a successful homeschool day is remember to be thankful. Whenever I dwell and think on the things that I have to be thankful for, doesn't your mood just immediately uplift? And I'm teaching my children how to think through these little things. So I've got my daughters now, including in their prayers, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to homeschool because this is a freedom that we have. I don't want to take it for granted. Not every single politician is a fan of homeschooling. And so this is a right and a freedom that we have right now. Who knows if it'll be our, our right tomorrow. So being thankful for every single day and asking God, please continue to protect that right for us. Thank you for allowing my husband to be able to support us on one income. We were a two income family until five years ago. It was a really big leap for us, a big leap of faith to have me quit my job with this house that we had. And I mean, it's not like we moved into a smaller house. It's not like we eliminated any expenses. In fact, <clears throat> when I decided to quit, we didn't have any car payments. A month before I quit, one of our cars went kaput and we had to get a new car. So a car payment was added, but you know what? The Lord took care of us. He always does. And that is something to be thankful for. I often say in our morning prayers to my kids, the sun came up today. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. I think of that every morning like, God 
bestows so many blessings on us each and every day that we take for granted. One of the days we were sitting on my on our porch and I was telling my daughters, look at how many colors of green there are outside. God didn't just pick one shade of green. How many crayons would we have to have in order to just color all of these greens outside? And we were just looking at creation in awe and just thinking about those little things that you don't normally think about. You just feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Like he's extremely creative and he, he just allows us to enjoy it. We are lucky and we have a lot to be thankful for. And it's hard to stay in a bad and grouchy mood when you start thinking on those things. Even when my kids are fighting with each other, I'm thankful I get to be there and counsel them and guide them. If they were in some other school and they had problems with other children, I'm not sure, I don't know how they would be counseled. I don't even know if teachers would see it. I mean, when I was in school, there were mean girl stuff going on years and years and years that teachers, they didn't know about it. Kids know how to change their behavior when adults are around. Well, in my home, I'm around all the time. So I see a lot and I'm just so thankful for these opportunities to be able to address those things with my children. Having this special time to bond and build these relationships with them. One of my favorite freedoms with homeschooling is if we're learning a history subject or we're learning a science subject, we like to pull up YouTube videos that are gonna explain that a little bit more or maybe get a DVD from the library. And I like to learn that way with my kids where we can sit or lay down on the couch together and snuggle up under a blanket and learn together. And my children will ask questions but I don't have to sit there and constantly be talking. I can be learning with them. Thankful for the opportunity to be the main teacher, to be able to equip my children for the battle ahead. We are down here for a spiritual purpose. There is a real enemy, there is a spiritual battle. And the one of the reasons I'm homeschooling is because I want to be the one to make sure that my children are fully equipped before they are launched out into that battle. How do I make that a success? I can't do it without the Lord. So all those other five tips I gave you, unless the Lord builds the house, he who labors, labors in vain. All of those things I place in his hand. And you know what? I am human. I am flawed. I am not perfect. If all of the success of our homeschool were dependent upon me, it's going to fail. It's not dependent upon me. I get to be a part of it and I get to actively and intentionally try to control myself and control my own thoughts and control my spirit to honor my Lord. But he really, he doesn't need me. He's not going to fail me. He's not gonna fail my children. He is sovereign. He's allowing me to be part of the blessing, but my children's success in their relationship with the Lord is not 100% dependent on me. Praise the Lord. Leave me a comment if you are a master at eliminating all your distractions, especially the phone. Give me some tips. That is one of those things, especially starting the YouTube channel. <laughs> Still figuring out how to, how to add this into my life without making it another distraction. I love doing the YouTube right now. I love doing the videos. I love the new interactions that I've had with you all. And I look forward to more and I love sharing the encouragement and how the Lord has has blessed me and taught me through the years. I love sharing those things because I know they're a blessing to me when others share them with me. So I want to continue it. Liliana, what do you think needs to happen to have a successful homeschool day? Um, for lunch break, we should have three hours of rest. For lunch, we should have three hours of rest? <laughs> yeah. And ah. we should do arts and crafts every single second. Every single second. And we should have a pool in our backyard. Okay, that sounds expensive. What do you think? What do you think, Drew? Do you, can you be a little more realistic? Um, yeah. What do you think it takes to have a successful homeschool day? It goes on house school and everyone's happy. Everyone's happy? Okay. And Natalie, Natalie, what do you think it takes to have a successful homeschool day? I think a successful school day is getting all your work done, maybe doing a few extra things, also having fun while doing it. Everybody's happy, no yelling, no... Here's what's for lunch. Carrots, broccoli, <laughs> eat up. And that's how to have a successful school day. <laughs>
What is your distraction? Aww. <laughs> I feel all over all my distraction. She's down here, she's just looking at me like, oh, look at the baby. No, you are a good distraction. You're not a good distraction. <laughs> Airplane mode for a couple hours. <laughs> I tried locking her in here with us because she's in a very barky mood right now. <laughs> and it's about that time of day where the public school kids get off the bus or um, the other parents are walking their dogs and she doesn't like anybody walking on her sidewalk or her street. So she's going to bark at them through the window and make sure that they know it. Here we go. Oh, girl. She gets her. She's cool. Okay, so distractions. Speaking of distractions, but I can't get rid of my dog. That's something I need to address right away. My dog is like... She's like trying to wrestle with me right now, aren't you? You're like, she's like trying to play. She's got my hand. She's like, play with me. Play with me. She's like a happy distraction though. Okay, so I have to put my phone. Oh my goodness. Stop. And I have to fight those other interests and say, you know what? This is like a job. This, <laughs> stop. No. So this is like a job, and these are my work hours, and these are the time. Oh my goodness, this is horrible. I think she's the cutest little distraction. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe. I look forward to next time, and I look forward to interacting with you in the comments below. So.